Hi, I'm Elliot and I'm 13. Welcome back to Living with XXY. And I'm Ryan, I'm 36. And today we're gonna to be talking about blood work, how important blood work is, how scary it can be, and how you can overcome your challenges with having to get your blood drawn. So twice a year, because we have Kleinfelter syndrome, XXY, our bodies don't make testosterone. And so twice a year we have to get our blood um, check to make sure our testosterone levels are good, whether you're using testosterone or whether you're like Elliot, where you're getting ready to use testosterone. So how, how many times have you had blood work done? Uh, twice a year, like you said, and, and you, like six since six I times? was, yeah, six since I was 10. Okay. So since you got diagnosed with Kleinfelder syndrome at 10, yeah. you've had six times of blood work. Yeah. And what were those first few times of getting your blood drawn like for you? It was scary and my anxiety kicked in like very quickly. So I didn't really have time to think about it because like my parents would tell me the second it, it, the second it happened or when we were driving there. So like I didn't have enough time to process it and like go through the things that were gonna happen. So they told you like going there yes. and they didn't, so do you think that you, do you wish that they told you like a day or two ahead of time so yeah. you could like learn about what the like possibilities are so you can prepare yourself? Yeah. And so they told you going there and then when you got there, what was the experience like for you? Scary because like I said before, it, it, I didn't get time to like think about it or like pinch myself to see like what was, how was it gonna feel like or. And so what did your anxiety do? Uh, it just, on, at the first time I just like, cause it's not the doctor that I went to, right? Like well, what I would usually do, it was like, like, one of those doctors that were not really good at it. So they would like, it was almost like they weren't like doing it like professionally or like, cause it, it hurt like very badly. But when I, when we switched, like he would like just push down on your skin and then go in. So, so that you had, a bit. so you had someone that wasn't really good at like making it feel painless. Yes. And then when you switch doctors, you found the other person had like a lot of experience where when they did the, when they did the draw blood draw and put the needle in your arm, you didn't feel it. I didn't feel anything. So what was, so were you scared of like, because you didn't have time to process, were you scared of like the pain or what, or you didn't even know what you were going to be scared of? I didn't know what I was going to be scared of. So then did your anxiety then just create, like in your own mind, it just created the worst case scenario for you? Yeah. And so once like you felt it, was that first time for you like a shock? Like, I don't wanna do this ever again? Yes, that was exactly did, what did happened. It, did anything happen to you? Did you pass out or anything? I passed out on the first one because of the anxiety. It wasn't because of the blood drawn or anything. It was just like I was repeating myself over, over again. And so in your mind, you were telling yourself like all these horrible things and yeah. then you were like hyperventilating and then you couldn't like, you just passed out because you were so yeah. scared. And so once you had that like really bad experience and you knew that you were gonna have to get blood work again, did it take you like a couple more times to process and learn? Yeah. And so what did you learn from it? I learned that it's not as bad as you think once you get the hand, hang, hand of it. So like, it took me like maybe like two, like, I don't know, but like it took me two years to like finally like, I, I can do this now and I can, I'm, I'm brave enough and I can, I can do this again, so. So then you haven't passed out. Yeah. So you like overcame the challenge of being able to process it, understand it, 
figure out like all the possibilities that could go wrong or the bad stuff. Yeah. And then once, so now that you go to the doctor, do you watch them put the needle in or do you like put your head away? I watch the needle go in for a split second and then I just look away. So you don't like to watch the blood like go into the syringes no. and stuff like that. And then once they are done, like when they pull the needle out, do you feel it? No, because they, so they would just push on your skin, go in, and then they would pick it up. And then once they're done, they would push it down and then they will come out because you can only feel it touching your skin. But when they put it in, then you can't, so. And then when it's done and it's over with, you're like, do you drink water or does anything help you feel better? Water d does and yeah, you can't feel it afterwards, so. And then they just wrap your arm up and or yeah. put a Band-Aid on it and you're good to go? Yeah. And so what would you tell other kids that are, you know, having their experience for the first time or that are afraid of needles? Um, I would, and this is a hard thing to do, but like, so I asked if like, I didn't ask, but m the person that was doing like, the blood work just like told talk to me like have a conversation so I wasn't so scared so like then it takes your mind off of oh my god this hurts so bad so and then or it's gonna be like oh my god how, how are they gonna pull it out what's gonna happen and so it takes your mind afterwards and when so like you can just talk and you can like start a conversation. Or sometimes when you're scared of the needles, then you have a hard time t like talking. So like you could maybe ask your doctor to like start a conversation if you're gonna go through that. That's a really good, a really good analogy for helping other people. And that same analogy of having someone start a conversation works really well with me when there's turbulence on an airplane and you're flying. And I know that has nothing to do with blood work, but it's the same concept and it really takes your mind off of like what the bad or what is happening in that situation. And it really clears your mind and allows you to like have peace and not be able to be like so tense and, and be able to relax in that moment. Yeah. That was, uh, that's some really good advice and, and so to be able to process, so to have your parents and to know about it and what the, what the bad, what the good, why you're doing it, what's the purpose of it, to know all that, you wish that you knew it before going in there. Yeah. So that's good advice and that's good things for parents and other guys to know is like do your research and really know what you're getting, what your kids are getting into or what you're getting into before you go do these things. Um, knowledge is power. So thanks, Elliot, for your understanding and, and telling, yeah. telling us all about it. Yeah. All right. Thank we'll, you. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.